What's going on guys? Dayton here, aka Dr. Arflower, back to you with another episode of Question and Answers. Uh, so we're going to get right into it guys. Uh, before we do, make sure you smash that like button. If you have a question you want to have uh, featured in the next episode, make sure you put it down in the comment section below. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell notification so you get notified when I put up new content. And let's get right into it guys. So Ryan Dunn asks, my quick question is, my seed sprouted and it's in rock wool. I went to turn my lights off this morning and saw yellow on the leaves. I know it could be a nitrogen problem, but it also could be something else. I'm running a 600 watt grow light. I'm a new grower and this is my first plant. Suggestions. Uh, so right off the bat, I'm guessing you're growing autoflower. Um, I usually recommend not using rock wool. Um, you could, uh, some people have great results, but I think you're more susceptible to stuff like this. Uh, if you're, I think if you're a beginner, it's kind of better if you just use your soil that you're going to be using or soilless mix or whatever, um, and not do transplanting. It just seems like, uh, you'll run into less issues when you're more intermediate grower. I say go right ahead, use rock wool and stuff if you know what you're doing. Um, but 600 watt light, I'm not sure what you're using. If you're using HPS, that could be too powerful. Um, you could have your light too close. Uh, if you're using a 600 watt LED light, again, you should be checking your PAR, making sure your, your plant, your seedling is, you know, is only like 100 to 200 PAR in that range. Um, you can use, there's free apps for it on your phone. Um, you can get a par meter, but I highly recommend that because 600 watts for, you know, a seedling, if you're using full power, that sounds like a bit much depending on how far your light is because the further your light is away, the less uh, powerful the light is, but also you don't need, you know, 600 watts for, for seedlings. Um, so hopefully that is adjustable, uh, your light there. Um, if you are using HPS, I would definitely say give it some distance, like four feet at least, kind um, kind of what I'm thinking here. But it also is hard to say. It could be a pH issue. It could be, uh, it's hard to say it's a nutrient issue because if it's a seedling that just kind of popped, then it shouldn't really be doing that. It shouldn't really need nutrients. Um, but that's also why I use like Promix HP because it's got a little bit of nutrients. Uh, but not that much that, you know, it's got enough for a seedling pretty much. Um, so that's kind of why I use it. I've never really done the Rockwell thing, um, but I have been thinking about it because I have heard there is a lot of benefit when you're using a six inch kind of Rockwell cube and plant it directly in your pot before the roots kind of pop out. Um, but yeah, that's something to try in the next grow maybe. So yeah. I hope that answers your question or it gives you a little bit of information. Ed Johnson says, I have a question. Two autoflower seeds sprouted an inch away from each other in a same 10 gallon pot. I thought the first one wasn't going to sprout, it, but it did. Uh, they are two different strains. Both autoflowers are wondering what should I do? Should I leave them or uh, take one out? Uh, so personally, if it was me, if I had, you know, I have a decent amount of autoflower seeds. I would probably take out that first one that didn't pop, uh, you know, at the time it should have popped. Um, cause that means something's making it go slower. So I would assume with that, you know, logic that the, that plant would, you know, maybe have issues compared to the last one you planted that has more vigor or whatever. Uh, the last one you planted must have more vigor if it, it popped faster than the first one. Um, cause you don't really want two plants like right beside each other. That's just going to cause issues. So definitely remove one, but I, I would probably kill it off. Cause if you're, if you're going to dig it up, you're going to disturb the other one. And I don't really think it's worthwhile unless, you know, it's a really expensive seed or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's probably what I would do. I would just kill that first one off and, uh, go from there. Uncle Len asks, I don't understand how autos work. Is the time the same? 
The most simplest way to tell you how autoflowers work is autoflowers do not uh, they do not flower according to their time schedule. Out in nature the plants need a certain amount of light and darkness so going towards the fall they get less light and more darkness which makes them go into flower. Um, so that's a normal photo period plant and the same thing you'd have to do that you have to replicate that in your garden if you're growing inside. If you're growing autoflowers they do not need that they go they grow by according to the days they're alive so they're not worried about light schedule they're just going by the actual time limit they have so different autos have different autoflower different autoflowers have different time limits according to their strains uh, what they're bred with if they're more you know sativa or more indica or you know more ruderalis um, so that is pretty much the simplest way to explain it autoflowers go by the time they're alive how many days so you if they say it's a 65 70 day strain that's how many days you got and that's the same if you're giving it 24 hours light 20 hours light 18 hours light it's all the same. Even if you ran it at uh, 12 and 12 hours, like uh, like a photo period plant, you would it would still be the same amount of time. You would just get less less production because they want a certain amount of light. Uh, autos do best 18 hours to 20 hours of light. Um, you could give a little bit more. Some people do. Eddie asks, can they stand hot temps? Um, so yeah, like autoflowers can take up into the 90s and stuff um, you don't want that optimal temperatures is around uh, high 70s to mid 80s Fahrenheit um, that's their optimal temperatures uh, but they can take higher sometimes you don't want to but that is also one of the reasons why I do want to move to Thailand because I want to do some experimental testing with autoflowers uh, with different kind of strains more indicas more uh, sativas and uh, see what actually works over there uh, if they can handle it if you need to do shading and stuff like that because I don't really live in a super hot area I live in northern Canada but I just don't do outdoor growing right now I'm usually an indoor grower uh, but uh, that is something I do want to do some testing on because uh, it is a question that gets asked a lot and uh, I wouldn't mind experimenting. So Cars asks, uh, what is the best light schedule for autos? 18 and 6 off or 24 hours on? Um, I would go with 18 and 6 off. Um, that just seems to be the best because uh, you get the best of both worlds. One, you're saving a little bit more power um, you're also giving them more rest time because plants do need rest time. I have done both ways 24 hours light and 18 hours light and six off um, and the 18 and six off usually just seems healthier, grows better and is less stressed because uh, though autos, a, a proper made auto should be able to uh, grow at 24 hours of light and never have uh, darkness at all their whole grow period though they can do that and uh, you should get decent results it doesn't seem to be the most optimal. Breeders like uh, Mephisto recommend this they say their plants can all do this they're also really well bred seeds or genetics so that makes it very safe to do that because when you add more stresses to it because when you add more stress elements to your grow, uh, you're more likely for Hermes and stuff. But when you have really good genetics, you don't have to worry about that. So that's why you could do that if you wanted to. I just don't recommend it. Um, the only time I would recommend it if you're growing in a colder area, like outdoor garage or something like that, and you just want a constant temperature, then I would do that. Um, but other than that, it doesn't really make much sense because then you're, you're getting more heat uh, for the 24 hours on and you're using up more electricity, costs more. Is there a big benefit? Doesn't really seem like it. Like it, the, for the amount of electricity you're going to be using extra, you would want more crop off. 
and you don't really seem to get it. Um, so I would I would say the happy medium is 20 hours on, four off. Um, I, I do that sometimes, or I do 18 hours. If in the summertime, I would definitely do 18 hours because I want less heat. Richard Stevens asks, when you're doing low stress training, is there a time when you untie the restraints or do you just let it stay on the whole time? Uh, I actually let it stay on the whole time. The whole grow, just once I tie it down, just leave it like that. Um, if I tie it down again, a different direction, just leave it like that until the end. And at the end, then I go through and I cut them all off and uh, let it you know, go back to natural state and then chop it down. Um, the reason is I don't want it uh, forming a different way. I want it to like still have that, uh, that pull to the side. Because let's say if you're pulling it to one side and you want to bend it over to the other side and, and uh, tie it down there, you want you know, some uh, tension over here to hold it kind of thing. Um, so that's the way I think. Rizik asks, pertaining to color temperature, does it make sense to grow in full spectrum 12K plus? instead of 55k to 65k or 2700k for flower um, no because uh, plants can only use up to a certain spectrum um, and then once you go past that it's all you know it's not really usable so when you're going to the deep deep blues you'd only want like a little bit of that. So yeah, anything past like 6,500, 7,000 is not really usable and doesn't really add much to the grow. Uh, so no, I would not be going that high. The lights that get up to those kind of uh, spectrums are actually like uh, fish tank lights. Like uh, if you're growing coral, I've heard that's what they use, like really high uh, Kelvin there, uh, around like 12,000. But not a can of grows indoors, it's just not useful really. So no, I would not be using that. I would stick to what, you know, the spectrums that everyone uses, the main ones, and uh, that, that'll give you the best results. So that's it for this episode, guys. Hope you guys like it. Make sure you smash that like button, it really helps the channel. If you guys want to get your questions answered in the next episode, put it down in the comment section below. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button, smash that bell, and you'll get notifications for when the new videos come out. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for new content coming out. We got some uh, interesting reviews. Oh, and we will get to that. We got an interesting review I got coming out here soon. So stay tuned for that, guys. And uh, until next time, peace out. And we'll catch you guys later.